I'm gonna talk to you about something and something that I think is really important. If you are in ministry or you're looking to get in ministry, especially if you are younger, what I mean by younger is young in ministry or young in age, um, especially those who are in that generation that's under 30. Um, man, let me tell you, you have definitely got to make sure that you develop an intimacy with God. This is so, so key. So I'm going to tell you how I got here. So, um, you know, I'm studying the word, I'm doing my daily devotion time and I come on Matthew chapter seven and, uh, and God just told me to study Matthew this week. And so on Matthew chapter seven, working my way through Matthew and I come up on a scripture that is not one that I haven't seen before, but it just jumped out to me differently this time. And Jesus is talking about um, those who are false prophets. He, he starts off talking about narrow is the way to heaven, basically, or narrow is the way to life, but broad is the way to destruction. And then he starts talking about false prophets. But then he gets on this next part that I think was really, really, really important, especially from where my generation is. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he starts talking about in verse 21, he actually starts saying that not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Um but those who do the will of my father. And this is interesting, the scripture that follows up. Verse 22 in Matthew chapter 7, it says in the Bible that many will say to me that, Lord, Lord, I have prophesied in your name. I have cast out demons in your name. I have uh, done many wonders in your name. Check this out. It didn't say false prophecy. It didn't say that they tried to cast out demons. It said that they actually prophesied, cast out demons, and did many wonders in your name. But Jesus responds and says, Then I will declare to you, depart from me, because I never knew you, those who practice lawlessness. And that was important to me. Because I think what happens is, and that word lawlessness, it actually means disobedient to God and disregard for the word of God. And I think that that was really important because I think what we are starting to see right now is those who are in ministry who have a disregard for the completion, the totality of the word of God and the instructions that the word of God gives, um, but want the power demonstrated. And the power demonstrated is great. Uh, but let me tell you something else that God and hail Satan. Hey, I don't think so. We, we hail God up in here. So I'm gonna pray for you, brother. But right now I'm going to keep going. So, um, so what I really believe is that God's power has to be on display, but we have a responsibility. I'm especially talking to you in full-time ministry. We have a responsibility to live out the word of God. And it's amazing how the power of God was still allowed to be present in their lives. And the power of God was allowed to go through them, but God said, Jesus said right here, depart from me for I never knew you. And that's important to know that it was never meant for us to be used by God and then misrepresent God. You know, you can actually be used by God, but not approved of God. Appreciate that. Thank you. I'm married. Um, and so you can be used by God, but not approved of God. And it's important for us to know that God isn't pleased with us just because we lay some hands on some people, just because we prophesy to some people, just because you know we do a, a little bit of work here and there. God isn't pleased with just us doing that and then going out and stepping off stage and acting like a jerk, you know, and going off stage and cheating on our wives and, and all this other crazy stuff, stealing money, not acting in integrity. I mean, no, none of that stuff pleases God. And so God doesn't say, oh, you're good. You're my favorite just because, uh, you know, because you laid some hands on the sick or maybe you prophesied today. So you're good. No, God holds us responsible for walking out all of the word of God. It is important that we walk out the word of God. So it says that you who practice lawlessness, uh, uh, I never knew you depart from me. What is lawlessness? That means that disobedient to God and his word. But how are people disobedient to God and his word? Let's think about it. People who don't walk in love. We are commanded to walk in love. So people who don't walk in love, I'm glad you agree. Thank you. People who don't walk by faith. We're supposed to walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. If we are not walking in faith, we cannot please God. So we're supposed to walk in faith. We're commanded to have integrity. We're commanded to walk in honesty. People don't do that. What about sexual sin? It says flee fornication. It doesn't say go ahead and 
invite fornication, doesn't say entertain fornication, doesn't say applaud fornication and sexual sin. It says flee from it. So we're not supposed to be ever caught up even in a scenario where sexual sin is something that is being thrown on us and even has some chance of sticking because we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Causing others to sin or stumble. The Bible cautions and talks about that. Even somebody, and I hope you're still on here, somebody asked me, what do I think about Donald Trump? I'm glad that you asked that because the Bible commands us not to like people who are in leadership, but it commands us to pray for those who are in leadership, who are in government, those who are over us. The Bible tells us to pray for those. So not that we don't have our own opinions, but if you ask me my opinion, I'm going to say my job is to pray. Not that I'm not going to vote. I believe in voting. You should get out there and vote. And when I'm you know, faced with the decision, I got to vote. I'm going to do it. But I'm going to pray first and I'm going to do exactly what the word of God says. Even if the person who gets in office is not the person who I voted for, that doesn't mean that I get up on my pulpit and badmouth the, the president or the vice president or whoever I didn't vote for. The word of God is clear. It says, pray for those in government and who are authority over you. I believe that people get out of order and in sin when they get out of order with the leadership uh, in their church and people who have been put in leadership over them. Now, I'm not talking about doing something immoral or anything like that against the word of God, but sometimes people, they want to they want to go against the leaders that have been set in place just because they don't have any discipline and integrity. Plain, plain as that, plain and simple as that. And so we got to obey the word of God. So if you notice in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus said that those who do the will of my father, that's who's accepted of me. And not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, uh, shall enter into, uh, uh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you see those who prophesied, those who laid hands on folks, folks even cast out demons. I want you to check this out. Folks were even casting out demons in Jesus name. And then living something that wasn't approved of God. Why would you vote if God has already placed someone who will be president of the United States? Well, that's my job to vote. That's my duty to vote. I hope you'll vote too. So, but I just wanted to share that with you. And that word to know, those, uh, it says in verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, who, those who of you who practice lawlessness. And that word no, that's important. That word no in the Greek is, um, Genoco, or uh, I think it's Gen Genosco, yeah, Genosco, and that word Genosco it actually means to know, but to intimately know. That same word was used in Luke chapter one and verse thirty-four when Mary responded to the angel who said, "You're going to have the Son of God," and Mary said, "How will this be? Since I do not." know a man. And so that no means to intimately know. So, so Jesus was saying, he will say, depart from me because I didn't intimately know you. And so it's possible to work for God and have God's power flowing through you, but for you to not intimately know God and be intimate uh, knowing the Father and the Holy Spirit and intimate knowing his will and his purposes and the plans and intents, knowing his heart. And so I believe that you can work for God without without intimately knowing him. And that, that's kind of what this proves. Um, and, and here's the reason why that happens. Is because God loves people so much that he will look past other people's faults, character flaws, and all that stuff. Uh, he will look past that in order to bless the other people, in order to, to get the power of God to help other people. What Bible am I looking out of? I'm looking out of the New King James Bible, Matthew chapter 17, or Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Read the whole chapter. It's in there. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, I have, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? They weren't, they weren't in here debating that this stuff wasn't true. Jesus wasn't in here saying that the debate is going to be, well, no, you didn't really do that. That's a lie. That wasn't the debate. The debate was, I declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, those who practice lawlessness. So let's get the scripture straight. That's the Bible I'm reading out of. So you can be um, used by God with the power of God flowing through you, but not approved by God. Check, check on, no, check on it. There is a great book by Cash Luna called, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so on the power of the Holy Spirit, and I, I, I don't have a problem with people having different opinions, but the power of the Holy Spirit, 
um, and, and in honor, I'm sorry, in honor of the Holy Spirit by Cash Luna. It's a great book. He actually talks about this principle that you can um, not be approved by God, but even used by God because God loves people. I can tell you exactly how it happens because you got people who are doing worship ministry all over this country who are in sexual sin, but yet who are leading others successfully in worship every week. You got a bunch of ministers who minister the word of God, who may heal some people, who may prophesy to some people, who may um, even cast out demons, but they are stealing money and not operating in integrity. How was this so? So how was this so? I'm, 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 I'm talking about your Bible, Matthew chapter seven. You tell me, how was this so that every week we have ministers, men and women of God who get on the pulpit and the power of God flows, but their life looks jacked up and they don't have any character and have any integrity. How is it? I see it every day. I know people. I can, I can run off names of people to you, but it doesn't mean that the power of God had stopped flowing. I still see people get healed. I still see people get ministered to because God loves people. He loves people past somebody else's sin, somebody else's character issues. Now God wants them to get those character issues right. And let me tell you that what happens is God loves people so much that he'll look past that stuff. But when it starts coming, back to my life as a minister or my personal life, then that's where the character flaws, the integrity flaws, all that sin, all that stuff, that's where all that stuff starts coming back on me because the consequences of, of sin and the wages of sin is death for me. You don't suffer because of my sin. I suffer because of my sin. So I hope you get that. I hope, hope that makes sense. And I know we had some uh, opposing views and God is not mocked. And I'm, and I'm, I sure don't have an issue with people's opposing views. I understand that. But Matthew chapter seven, go ahead and check it out. And yes, long suffering. God models long suffering. Hey, what's up? What's up? God models long suffering. Absolutely. And I love those who walk in the gifts of the spirit. I mean, um, you know, those who, who lay hands on people and I lay hands on people um, who prophesy and, and the power of God flows through them. I love the prophetic gifts. Um, there's some great prophets who I watch on, on Periscope myself, uh, John Eckhart and Dr. Matthew Stevenson, great men of God and blessings from Europe. Hey, hey, um, great men of God and, and check them out if you get a chance. And, you know, the thing that I respect most about about them is they're not just trying to walk in the power of God. They're not just trying to prophesy and the rest of their life is jacked up. They are being held accountable and they hold themselves accountable for their word that they preach, that they live by. And so I want to tell you that one of the things that has impressed me the most about my own father, Bill Winston, my own father, is that I have seen him walk out integrity for years and years and decades. I have watched him walk integrity. I have watched him walk out the same message that he preaches on that pulpit every Sunday and Wednesday. And, and it's amazing that he's the same man on the pulpit as he is off the pulpit. And it's, it's just a blessing to watch. And it's inspired me so much. Thank you for your comments. I see these. It's inspired me so much because I want people I, I want to I wanna be ministered to by people who not just teach this stuff, but they live this stuff, you know, and um, and and, you know, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad that he's he's helped you and he's a role model for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, and that's the kind of man I want to be. I want to be the kind of man who leaves a legacy, not just for you know, being used in the power of God and helping people and, and, and being able to pour out the power of God, you know, power of God flowing through me. But I want to leave a legacy of character. I want people to say that I was blessed more by watching this brother's life than I was by any sermon that he's ever preached. That's what I want people to say. And I, I cause I don't want to get to heaven and God says, um, well, I want them to say, well done. And so character counts. People got to read and do all of the Bible, uh, not just some of the Bible. And that's the Bible that I'm reading out of. That is not just about the power of God flowing through you, but it's about, do you have character? Do you have integrity? Are you living out this word of God? Are you being matured in the word of God? And you are welcome for this. Um, and I really believe this. I know everybody is growing. I know we're all growing. We're all going through. I, I know um, and those are some high standards for yourself. Well, you know, I believe in high standards. Um, and I know we're all growing and that's cool. I have grace for people that, you know, we're all growing, but let me tell you, adults are growing just, 
you know, just the same as kids are growing. Now, kids are growing differently than adults, but we're all growing. We're all growing. But I want to say that we got to grow up. <laughs> At somewhere along the line, we got to cross the line from being a child to an adult. We got to grow up. And so, you know, people, that's, you know, they seek out the power of God, but sometimes they forget the intimacy with God. Um, and it's not only about what you did, uh, but uh, but God is interested in who you become as well. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And it's and it's really about um, not just the power of God, but intimacy with God, knowing God, knowing God's heart um, and being one with God. And uh, and so I really believe that, you know, we got to just keep growing. And those of us who are in ministry, especially fivefold ministry, uh, we have to be an example. You know, Timothy talks about that, especially to youth and those who are younger, be an example um, and, and word and, 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 and indeed and everything you do, be an example. Um, and thank you so much. And, you know, want to carry on the legacy of faith. Um, I want people to be blessed by my character. And, uh, you know, we might be uh, we might disagree in some interpretations of things, but I want people to be blessed by my character and I want people to see that I love God and I love people and I just want to help people. And, and that's that's all I care about doing. And as long as, you know, the power of God is flowing and then when we get off that stage, off that pulpit, that we're living out the same word of God that we preached uh, and, and, you know, seeking for intimacy with him, um, I believe God is going to be pleased and people will be touched. And uh, and thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for all the comments, all the uh, all the love. And uh, yeah, it's just a call to integrity. And um, and I know sometimes people are challenged or even intimidated um, by that. I, I knew I knew when I was going to share this, I, I I already knew that I was going to have some people who weren't going to understand or see it my way. And that's and that's fine um, because this challenges people. It challenges people and lets them know that hey, it's not just about the power of God flowing through you, but it's about how you live. And I know that's true because I watch everyday examples all the time. I know some people intimately and I have had to like call them on it. Like, look, the way you're living is not okay and is not conducive to what you're doing and what you're teaching and who you're pretending to be. And just because God loves people and he's still going to heal people doesn't mean that he approves of the garbage you're doing. Sin is sin. Don't get that twisted. But God is love. He loves you and he loves people. But he's going to uh, uh, love people and be used by you to love on people. And so, um, you know, so I, I know, you know, sometimes it could be a sensitive thing. But, yeah, we got to get out of our comfort zone into real relationship. Absolutely. The character is exposed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, every day will bring a challenge to your character. That's why intimacy with God is imperative. Absolutely. Character. Character counts. Absolutely, guys. Character counts. And um, and absolutely, you got to be courageous. But my hope and prayer is that you will share this with somebody else. Read Matthew chapter 7. You don't even have to take my word for it. Read Matthew chapter 7. Hopefully it speaks to you like it spoke to me. Um, that the great works that God wants to do through us are for the people's benefit. Sometimes, you know, we think it's for our benefit sometimes because it helps us grow our own ministry, <laughs> but it's for the people's benefit. And, you know, cause God loves people. That's why he uses us as vessels. Cause he loves the people, not because it's about us, but it's about the people. It's about um, being used by God to bless the people, to have a heart, to love and serve the people. He even talks about, and, um, First Corinthians chapter uh, 13, I think in verse two, it talks about that even though I might have prophesied, I, I mean, I might have all power of prophecy, but if I don't have love, I am nothing. And so it's important to know that, hey, look how high priority God puts on love. He puts it on a higher platform, higher priority than the power of prophecy. I mean, I could prophesy all day to everybody, but if I don't have love, Paul says, that I, I'm nothing. That's what Paul said. And so the word of God, your Bible, it says this. And so I think that's really just really important to remember. Um, yeah, people are always watching. I grew up learning that, that people are always watching. So I always try to be a good example. And let me tell you, I'm flawed too. E even today, I had to ask for forgiveness because I, I was... I was not as kind as I could have been to the guy at the post office because I was trying to do some passport stuff for my children and uh, and and I, I was hungry and I was just kind of I was just kind of short with him and 
Um, and so I was hungry. You're right. I was hungry. I was kind of short with them. And, and it was because, you know, the hours that they had listed, they say, oh, no, we can't do it. You know, come back in an hour. And I'm like, no, that, but we called and you said it was OK. And so we felt like we got some bad information. My wife, you know, she's patient. She's awesome. But me, I wasn't as patient. So um, so but, you know, I even asked for forgiveness for that because I mean, I because I, I, I look back at it and I said, could I have said that I was walking in love and being like Jesus in that moment? And, and I wasn't, and I don't think that, you know, what I was doing was a good witness. Now I'm not, I, I don't go fly off the handle. I'm, I'm not cussing people out or going crazy. I'm not throwing chairs. I'm not like, I'm not yelling at folks through the window. I don't, I don't do any of that. But even, even those little things, you know, I just wasn't as patient as I could have been. I wasn't as courteous, courteous. It may have not even been his fault. And so, um, so you just always walk, walking in love, always, you know, doing the best and, and thinking the best of every situation. Uh, that's what I want to be because you know, I, I teach love, but I also want to walk out love. I want to, I want to be love. I want to show love. And so that's what it's about for me. So I know the caption of this, what I named the caption of this, people want the power of God, but no intimacy. I believe it. Sometimes people, um, and let me tell you, I just cannot be transparent with you guys. Um, me and my dad, we talk about that, that that is something that is a challenge more so for the young generation than I think any generations that have come. Something that I really love and respect about the old school generation, I'm talking about those who are 50 and older, is it seemed like they really put an importance on living the word of God, character, integrity, who you were um, off of the pulpit. But it seems like... Um, as the younger generations come along, and I'm 31, so I'm, I'm part of the younger generation. Um, um, it seems like that's more of a challenge. And, and it seems like just because people are being used with the power of God, people think that that means that God approves of the sin that they're doing outside of the pulpit. And that is not that is not the truth. And how do I know that people feel like God approves because they're not changing and they don't like they don't feel like they need to. There's no accountability. I mean, it's just and yeah, it is. It's a challenge for millennials today. Um, and and I challenge our young people like, yo, live this thing like and I understand why and I, I talk to my dad a lot about this. I understand why he has challenges sometimes. And this is not all this is all, not all young ministry. And, and this isn't this isn't all the young people, but. I see why he has a challenge sometimes in, in, in believing the authentic ministry of some of the younger generation because he sees it. He sees that there is, there's a hunger for the power of God, but then there's a lack of abiding by the word of God for personal lifestyle. And so, you know, they want the supernatural power of God, but don't necessarily want to obey the Bible for the lifestyle. Um, for the God that they preach. And so that could be a challenge. And so I think that's why God is using people to encourage others. Um, our young generation needs a challenge and structure in their life. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we need to, we need to grow. And, uh, so we want the power of God hearts for this. Thank you so much. We need the power of God in our lives. Absolutely. But you know what God wants, um, just as much as the power of God in our lives, he wants us to practice the word of God. He wants us to be obedient to the word of God. He wants us to actually do what the word of God is telling us to do. What does that mean? Walking in love, walking by faith. That means not causing others to sin or stumble. That means um, praying for those in government and in leadership. That means that you're being under order and in submission to even your leadership. Um, Psalm 63, 8, that's our scripture for go hard. You're even being in submission and in order in your local church. Um, that also means, you know, that you are having integrity and you're growing in maturity. So I want my character to be my legacy just as much as the power of God. And, um, and I think that a lot of people want that. And, you know, sometimes it takes some discipline. We got to do it. Those who love me, keep my commandment. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys get it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Please share this with somebody else. Here's endures of the word. Absolutely. Here's endures of the word. That that is that's